Along the banks of the Nile, a simple reed transformed civilization. For over 3,000 years, the technology to turn plant into page carried human knowledge across generations and continents. This is the story of papyrus, the world's first paper. Before papyrus, human knowledge was fragile, confined to memory, stone, and clay. But in the marshy deltas of Egypt, opportunity grew in abundance. The cypress papyrus plant was far more than just material for writing. It represented life itself to the ancient Egyptians. They used it for food, medicine, boats, sandals, rope, and most importantly, as the medium that would preserve their civilization for millennia. By 3000 BCE, Egypt had unified into a powerful kingdom. As administrative needs grew, so did the demand for an efficient writing surface. The earliest surviving papyrus dates to around 2560 BCE, but evidence suggests Egyptians were making it centuries earlier. Unlike heavy clay tablets from Mesopotamia or expensive animal skins, papyrus offered an ideal combination. Lightweight, relatively durable, and abundantly available. The plant itself thrived in the shallow waters along the Nile, growing up to 15 feet tall with a triangular stem. While its core would become writing material, no part went to waste in Egyptian society. The transformation from plant to paper required precision, patience, and specialized knowledge. First, workers would harvest mature papyrus stems, cutting them close to the roots. Next came the critical step of processing the stems. Workers would strip away the green outer rind to expose the white pith inside, the crucial material for paper making. This pith contained long cellular fibers that gave papyrus its strength and flexibility. The craftspeople would then slice the pith into thin strips, approximately 16 inches long. The quality of the final product depended on the thickness and evenness of these slices. Here begins the revolutionary process that transformed these plant strips into writing sheets. The strips would be laid side by side on a hard, flat surface, slightly overlapping. Then a second layer would be placed on top, running perpendicular to the first layer. This cross-lamination technique created a strong, stable structure, similar to modern plywood. The natural starches in the papyrus acted as a binding agent. Next came pressing. The layered sheets were placed between cloths and subjected to pressure either with weights or a specialized press. They remained under pressure for about six days. During this time, the plant's natural adhesives bonded the layers together while excess moisture was squeezed out. After pressing, the sheets were dried in the sun. Finally, craftspeople would polish the surface using ivory, shells, or smooth stones to create an ideal writing surface. The quality varied greatly. The finest papyrus reserved for religious texts and royal documents was thin, flexible, and nearly white. Lower grades, used for everyday accounting and letters, were thicker and darker. Individual sheets, typically 12 to 15 inches wide, could be joined together with paste to create scrolls up to 40 feet long. With papyrus, writing evolved from purely practical record keeping to literature, science, and art. Literacy was rare in ancient Egypt. Perhaps only one to two percent of the population could read and write. Scribes trained for years to master hieroglyphics and later hieratic script, a cursive form that was faster to write. The tools of writing were simple but effective. Scribes used reed pens with split tips, similar to modern nib pens. Ink came from two main sources, black carbon ink made from soot mixed with gum arabic and red ochre for emphasis or to mark the beginning of new sections writing on papyrus changed how information was structured unlike stone which demanded brevity papyrus allowed for elaboration on papyrus we find everything from religious texts like the book of the dead to administrative records medical treatises mathematical problems legal contracts personal letters and literature including the world's earliest known love poems. The medium shaped the message. 
Instructions for the afterlife, once confined to tomb walls, could now be customized for the individual and buried with them. Papyrus became Egypt's most valuable export after grain. The Greeks called it Byblos, which gave us words like Bible and bibliography. Rome became so dependent on Egyptian papyrus that when supplies were disrupted in the first century CE, it triggered an administrative crisis. Egypt maintained a near monopoly on papyrus production for thousands of years. Controlling this essential material for Mediterranean civilizations gave Egypt significant economic and cultural power. Papyrus workshops, mostly state-controlled, employed thousands. A standardized sheet unit called a kolima regulated the trade. Alexandria became the center of papyrus manufacturing during the Ptolemaic period. Its famous library, attempting to collect all world knowledge, may have held over 500,000 papyrus scrolls before its destruction. As demand grew, so did innovation. Double-sided rolls, improved manufacturing techniques, and specialized grades for different purposes emerged. What was written on papyrus shaped Western civilization. The oldest complete copy of Homer's works, Essential Mathematical Principles, from Euclid, early Christian texts, and countless legal and administrative systems, all preserved on papyrus. In Egypt's dry climate, papyri have survived for millennia. The Oxyrhynchus papyri, discovered in ancient garbage dumps, revealed everyday life and previously lost literary works. Despite its durability, papyrus had limitations. It was susceptible to humidity and insect damage. By the 8th century CE, parchment and later paper gradually replaced it. The last known document written on papyrus comes from the papal chancellery in the 11th century, marking the end of a 4,000-year technological era. Yet even as production ceased, the discovery of preserved papyri continued, revolutionizing our understanding of ancient life. Every year, new technological methods allow us to read previously illegible papyri. Multispectral imaging can reveal text invisible to the naked eye, while carbon dating provides precise chronology. Today, papyrus production continues as an artisanal craft in Egypt, mostly for tourists. But its legacy lives on in unexpected ways. The cross-laminated structure of papyrus influenced modern technologies from plywood to fiberglass. The concept of layering fibers perpendicular to each other to create strength runs through the history of materials science. And of course, our very word paper derives from papyrus. The technology that replaced it, pulping plant fibers to create sheets, follows a different process but serves the same fundamental human need, preserving our thoughts across time. From the banks of the Nile to the libraries of the world, papyrus technology shaped how humans recorded, shared, and preserved knowledge. A simple read transformed into civilization's memory, connecting us across millennia to the thoughts, hopes, and discoveries of those who came before. In these ancient reads, humanity found its voice across time, and the echoes of that innovation continued to resonate in every page turned, every scroll unrolled, and every ancient text that still speaks to us today.